So since last video, I have read quite a bit of Chainsaw Man. Instead of doing one arc, I decided to read three. Um, I have read uh, around chapter 13 up to 52. So quite a bit. Um, I essentially just speed ran three arcs and read all of them, which was the Eternity Devil arc, the Katana Man arc, and the Bomb Girl arc, which there's a lot to go through. <laughs> Starting off with the Eternity Devil arc, it was essentially like Denji's first major job with a bunch of these new characters. We met uh, Hiyakawa's boss, essentially the girl who taught him or raised him with inside the security division. We learn a bit more about the other people who work inside the division, their powers, their abilities, and we just see how kind of horrific and weird this manga can get, especially with the different kinds of devils. The Eternity Devil is something really interesting because it was just an endless loop inside this hotel. And it was really cool that Denji was the one who figured out, yeah, this is how I'm gonna beat him, was to continuously fight him and give him pain until he wants to die. Which I thought was like, I didn't even think of that. Because I thought it would be something very interesting about how, hey, there's this loophole. No, it's just gonna be hack at this thing until it wants to die. Which, you know, hey, you got out of it. Pretty smart, right? That arc essentially ends with, you know, Denji nearly getting laid and then deciding against it because he only wants to have his first time with Makima. There was the very funny moment where the girl kisses him and just vomits in his mouth, which I thought was just like, this is great. This is peak. <laughs> this is peak. I loved it. <laughs> it was the chapter where everyone was deciding to kill Denji because they thought they'd finally get to live. And then Himeno and uh, Aki were essentially like, nope, not happening. And I thought it was cool because we finally got to see Aki show a bit of a side where he kind of cares about Denji, but he also needs him. He knows that he's crazy enough and helpful enough to fight something like the gun devil, which, you know, took his family and everything like that. And seeing the way that story was played out was so cool in showing like just some random family turned out to be Aki's family, which I was like, fuck, that's awesome. Of course, the... Eternity Devil arc ends and the Katana Man one starts with a lot of bad shit happening to all the characters we basically just met. All these new people that we just met, including Himeno, dies trying to save uh, Aki. We also learn about the sword Aki uses and its price essentially, which I thought was really cool, showing he has two years left to live. It's two years to find the Gun Devil arc and kill it. You have these people who are said to get Chainsaw, get Chainsaw Man's heart, which is going to be coming up again and again later and later, which... I'm really excited to find out, I still don't know. Saving Denji and then having him in power train underneath this absolute psycho to try and defend themselves against uh, these attackers who were sent by the gun devil was a really cool moment, especially because Denji just shows, hey, I can learn, I can get better, I can get stronger, even though he's still just a kid, you know, wanting to kick the katana man in the dick and, and Aki doing it again for revenge. I thought it was a cool little bonding moment. Just shows, hey, Aki's got a, he's got a, he's got a fun side to him, which I thought was, hey, that's cool. All right, we're kicking this guy in the dick for, for Jimeno. All right, I like this. Which showed heaps of cool abilities of all these different devils. We met Beam, we met the angel devil. We met heaps of different devils essentially in this arc, which was setting up characters that will later just seem to make a lot of sense uh later on but i gotta say out of all three of these arcs the one i liked the most and the one that hurt me the most was the bomb girl arc i was not expecting for this random girl to come out of nowhere and essentially steal denji's heart and in a way like mate convinced me that yes, this is the one. This is the one that's gonna save Denji. This is the one that's gonna make Denji think about the circumstances he's in and where, in where, you know what? Your situation isn't that great. You have Reese, this girl that just randomly met Denji in a phone booth in the rain and then invited him to come to her coffee shop. And he comes there immediately after because he's got nothing else to do. And then they, they bond, they're both 16, she's at school and they spend a lot of time together. And he's starting to realize like, yo, is she flirting with me? He's like laughing. And then he's like realizing after she says, you're very funny. He's like, oh no, she likes me. Oh shit. I like people who like me, <laughs> which is probably one of the most relatable things about humans that we don't actually admit. We like people who like us. Yes, we like validation. Absolutely. Seeing that relationship was very different and cool. You could tell that he's conflicted with, with Makima, which Makima, I think, wanted to make sure that she keeps a hold on Denji, especially based on his power, his his mentality as well, and the way he can continuously keep fighting. Of course, at the school, you have this romantic 
thing between the two. They hop in the pool. Denji's like, oh, my, Miss Maki, I love you so much, but bro. <laughs> and I thought it was just so, so great. It suddenly turned from this action shonen kind of messed up, gory hype manga to this really cool little slice of life until, of course, the rain came in at the school. And then you see reads absolutely stranglehold this murderer and start speaking in russian and then i'm like oh no i knew at that moment i just knew especially when she started speaking russian i'm like okay there's a catch here this isn't right and sure enough in their next meeting when they go to the festival you think oh it's gonna be so romantic and i gotta say for creating this manga they're able to put a lot of tropes in there that are then subverted there is the trope again of the character who wants to get stronger but just wants to get laid but at the same time there is a meaning behind why just wanting to get laid like the harem manga is just yo get girl but in this it's like get girl but that's my dream <laughs> you know there's a reason why i want a girl you know does girl mean this or like oh i don't want just boob i want connection i want i want real love <laughs> Another trope you would have of certain things in like a slice of life is that if you go to a festival, it's gonna be some romance. And they do that. As soon as the fireworks go off, Reese kisses Denji. And then you're like, oh, he collapsed. He's so shocked. It's like, wait, why is his mouth bleeding? <laughs> oh, oh, she bit out his tongue. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Oh, she sliced off his hand. Okay, he can't transform. That's crazy. And then Beam shows out of nowhere going like, yep, knew she was sus. Sus as fuck. This harpy of a woman is trying to harm my Denji. And it turns into this absolutely banging chase scene of Denji being so wounded and so heartbroken over the fact that when he can finally transform, he fights back against this girl who turns out to be the bomb devil. Such a cool design. Her head's like a zeppelin. Um, her dress is made of dynamite and her arms are like lighters. It's really cool. It's really cool how that whole devil power thing works. And then to transform, she pulls the chokehold on her neck uh, like a like a grenade and I fucking love it. And she can even throw her head and oh, it's like, like I, I'm already loving Reese as a character and a love interest for Denji. And now that she's even a villain, she's even more interesting and cool with her design. It's just fucking sick. Now, the whole chase sequence and the whole fight of Hayakawa making sure that Denji doesn't get killed, even saving the angel devil, which shows that he cares about some people, touching the angel devil and realizing he just lost two months, which if you only have two years, that's a big deal. And uh, I'm really, I'm really worried for him. I'm really worried for him, <laughs> especially because we know in the future, apparently he dies the worst way according to the future devil. But yeah, oh man. Anyway, we're getting over to the battle and Denji starting to talk about how no one wants his heart and everyone breaks his heart. What about his heart? What is, why is it that he keeps getting betrayed? Why can no one be honest with him? Which I think is something that is going to come in again later, especially with Makima because Let's be honest, like that's true right now. Denji doesn't have a lot of people around him who are honest to him and who actually genuinely care for him. Now, Rei starts to try and use some manipulation, nearly falls for it again, and they have a full on battle. And then Beam comes in here with his shark devil form and it becomes this cool moment where, you know what, Denji might actually figure out how to use his powers better. He can start moving faster. And there's this idea that he's gonna sling his chainsaw leash to buildings so he can move really fast through the air. But instead, he leashes it across beam and has him swim along through the ground and into the whirlwind devil that just comes out of nowhere with bomb. And it's just this fucking huge, massive battle. And I never thought I would see a guy who was made of chainsaws riding a shark that is part man, part shark. It's pretty cool. <laughs> And, and it, you know, it, it turns into the Sharknado moment, literally shark going through the fucking tornado. It's just really cool. Sometimes the action's a bit hard to follow in terms of I'm like, okay, what is happening? Like, it, it, is that an attack? Did he miss? Did he not? I, it's a lot, there's a lot going on, but regardless, it was really cool. And the way the fight ended was awesome because he essentially takes them to the bottom of the ocean and Beam saves them. Now, it turns to this moment where Rhee's decides to leave and let him go because she knows she's failed her mission. She has to go into exile and find somewhere. And Denji almost convinces her that, hey, I know you tried to kill me. I know you just were trying to fool me, but I think there's something more, you know, as long as I can live a life that is normal, where I get to eat nice food and be free and not have to worry about, am I gonna eat the next day is pretty good. As long as I can keep this, 
I'm willing to wipe the slate clean for people because you know what? I think he probably sees more to them than that. Or at least he can look past the surface level and just say, hey, there's more to you. I don't care. I'm over it. <laughs> you know, I'm over it. And I'm sure he's still probably very smitten. Of course, Reese leaves. But then she has this moment. I'm like, oh, this is so amazing where she thinks, you know what? I kind of like him. Why do I like him? I know it was all fake because she was trained to do it. She was raised by the Russian military as a devil, but she kind of liked that. She kind of liked that he was honest and she did reveal stuff to him that were true, like wanting to grow up in a school and just getting a basic education, which she didn't really have and Denji didn't really have. So she wasn't, it wasn't all manipulation. There was some truth in that, some truth in that that she was trying to show, like the stuff you're given is just basic living. You're not living, living. And I think Denji would have really figured that out if she was able to get back. But of course, walking down that alleyway and then there's Makima. And it and it was the first time that I'm like, oh no. This is this is the one time I didn't want to see Makima. It's just I'll be honest, I was rooting for Reese. I was. I was thinking, you know what? She's bad, but she's good. <laughs> and Makima comes in here and oh, it just all goes bad. And that's basically where we ended, and it starts with the assassination arc, which I'm up to now. In terms of these past couple arcs, I feel like there's been a heap amount of growth. Maybe with Denji a little bit, he's narrowing down the things that he feels like are important to him. He hasn't changed in a whole lot of sense, but he has learned a lot. Hayakawa, I think, has learned a lot. Um, him and Denji are becoming very good friends, at least. Power is starting to really value, I guess, things about her colleagues that, you know what, not bad. She didn't really do too much growing, but she notices things about Denji as well, or her and Denji get along really well, which is awesome. Makima we learn in the Eternity Devil arc or the Katana Man arc section, her power that she had where she could take a life of someone, hear their name, and then squish them, which was, I really, I don't know. <laughs> what does this mean? I read a bit into the next arc of the sound in hell that devils can't really remember even when they get reincarnated. Like, so we're learning a bit more about lore stuff and about how the chainsaw devil or how chainsaw power of a devil is like very, very important to the narrative more than I ever thought. I thought Denji would just be thrust in this world and then he's got this power that he uses in an interesting way to defeat his enemies. But at the same time, there's something about his power. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like the founding Titan in terms of I had to compare it in the importance of a series. This is the thing that apparently a lot of people are trying to get to, right? I don't really know, of course, this next arc I read a bit about in terms of the sending the entire world, sending groups of people to capture the Chainsaw Man's heart. Clearly, Denji's either a threat or he's the key to something. And clearly the higher ups know this, otherwise the Tokyo government, or at least the division of the government wouldn't be like, hey, we need to keep this kid on lockdown. But so far I'm loving the series. I think it's really fun. And I think it can tell really meaningful, interesting themes in a way that doesn't feel very pretentious and can feel very fun. I haven't found many moments to be horrific. I thought the series at, at the beginning would be extremely horrific and they were like, they're very dark and and very awful in a lot of ways. Like, it's a very cold world that the series is based in, but at the same time, it's tragic and comedic at the same time. Two sides of the same coin, essentially. And I do love it. I think it's a really great vibe. So far, I think my favorite character is Hayakawa, Aki Hayakawa. I think he's awesome. I like how he has that goal to get revenge, but at the same time, he doesn't have much time left to get it. I really hope he doesn't have an awful death, like they said. I think maybe the future can be changed. Uh, based on the future devil. Um, if anything that I've been reading has taught me, it's that if you've got Chainsaw Man, it seems like it disrupts the power of every other devil in so many different ways and has the power to change the norm of things, you know? I really am interested, especially for Denji, about the nightmare he keeps happening with the door, where it's Pochita apparently on the other side of the door saying, don't open it, which really gets me excited to see that, okay, Denji has, besides his goal of boobies, is essentially there's something inside him that he has to wrestle with. There's something inside him that is not safe for the people around him or for himself. There's something about that that is extremely mysterious, which I can't wait to find out about. 
and I, I really am excited for, to learn more about the world because uh, in the last video, I think I wanted to learn more about the world and the way the law works, the way the rules are. And these three arcs just gave me so much information, almost too much in a way, because when I was introduced to all these different devils, it felt like, oh, okay, so that's this character, that's this name. Characters come and go pretty quick, especially if you're reading through a large amount of chapters. It's hard to maybe understand fully their abilities and how they're used in a, in a huge way. Um, when they fought the snake girl, I was kind of confused about that power for a bit until the end. Yeah, it's ramping up. It's ramping up for sure. And I'm really excited. But hey, that's what I think of the Chainsaw Man arcs, those three, the Eternity, Katana and Bomb Girl. God, man, I, I, I wish I wish Reese lived. <laughs> I'm so caught up about that. I'm low key just like depressed about this. Just like she could, she could. Oh man, they could have fallen in love, man. Come on, man. I, I, I thought Makima was like, okay, obviously she's suspicious and obviously she doesn't care, care about Denji, but hey, she's very cute. And I thought, uh, you know, we'll find out how bad she is in the future. And then of course the Reese thing happened. I'm like, you know what? I don't like you anymore. Not one bit, not one bit. Maybe she'll change my mind, but I doubt it. But anyway, that's what I think of those arcs. Let me know uh, what you guys think in terms of my thoughts, you know, how far close I am to the theory. What do I have? Don't spoil, of course, but I don't know. I guess you could just be like, hey man, I can't wait till he gets to this arc. He ain't ready for this arc. That guy's gonna freak out when he learns, question mark. I don't know, some stuff like that. Or at least tell me how much you were cut up when you learned about all these events. How cut up were you when Reese died? Sag. But that's all for me, guys. If you made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. Helps me out a lot, especially if you like and subscribe. Anyways, that's all from me. My name's Mugen. As always, have a good one.